together. Lord, we thank You for this morning. We thank You that we can gather together, that we can come around the Word. It is an honour that we get to hear Your Word, Lord. We thank You that Your Word can change us and transform us and grow us, Lord Jesus. We thank You that where the world fails, Lord God, Your Word will always succeed. We pray that today You speak to us in Jesus' Name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. You can grab your seats and um, as you do that, just turn to your neighbour and just say, Are you single? (laughs) Just trying to help some people out. The series... This series is New Beginnings, you know, so there could be some new beginnings for some of you this year. I don't know. But um, hey, we're doing this series on New Beginnings, and as Dion mentioned, and we're going to be covering a few of the chapters of Genesis and covering a few topics and just speaking around, hey, how do we set ourselves up for this year around a whole bunch of different things? And um, I'm excited to be speaking about this and speaking from Genesis. And today, I, I want to speak about how do we deal with with our emotions? How do we deal with maybe anger? Uh, How do we deal with responding to situations in life in a way that we know is healthy? And so I'm not a psychologist, but we're gonna look at the Word of God and we're gonna learn from the Word of God and what the Word of God has to say about it and what it's teaching us. And so the title of my message this morning, if you're taking notes, is Lights, Camera, Overreaction. You see what I did there? Because usually you say lights, camera, action, but I'm saying lights, camera, overreaction. Just thought I would explain it for some of you that needed to catch it. But even though my wife would disagree, um, I'm not perfect. And uh, I, I have moments in life, I have things that get to me. Anybody have some things that get to them? You know, it can maybe bring out a little bit of a reaction out of you. You know, for example, the alarm sound. Do you, do you guys know what I'm talking about? The alarm sound that goes off in the morning. Um, bad parking. You know when someone parks in two parking spots? That gets to me. Um, Load shedding, hold on, load shedding between 8 and 10.30 p.m. To be honest, any other time, I've just accepted it's part of life. But that 8 to 10.30 slots, I can't do it. Um, When Take A Lot sends you a message at 5 a.m. saying your delivery will be arriving by 5 p.m. today, please stay at home to be ready to receive it. In other words, they're holding you hostage. That's what's happening. you know, personal, personal thing is that, that slow walking family in the shopping mall. Walk in single file. You don't need to walk horizontally holding hands, slowing me down. Um, neighbors parting it up all, all hours of the night, but specifically only playing Kurt Darren. That one gets to me. Uh, when, this is an obvious one for most people. When people talk or on their phones during a movie. I mean, I honestly feel like somebody at the beginning of the movie needs to come out and just do a disclaimer. And like maybe we have those seats that when they answer their phone or when they start talking, the seat just opens up and they just fall through the ground. That would be amazing. Um, cats, just in general. Um, cats, the movie as well. GP number plates. No, we love you, Khao Teng. We love you. We are just so thankful that you can be back home, planted in the house of God. And um, some of you are guilty of this when your seat in church is taken. Oh, for some of you, that's, that's, that's a big day. That's a big day in church. Uh, when the worship leader is off key. No, Waza, I don't mean it. Uh, when the lyrics for worship aren't on the screen. You know, it's like, uh, when the preacher says, I'm preaching better than you're responding. Have you heard that before? I'm like, maybe you're not. I don't know. Um, Sin, just trying to be spiritual. Just trying to be spiritual. When people don't live out their full potential, that gets to me. Um, But hey, some things get to us. Some things get to us. Some things get to us more than others. Uh, There's moments where we can overreact. And sometimes it's a light moment and it's just a a small overreaction. But let's be honest, there are some moments that we're not proud of. That we can't handle our emotions. We can't deal with our our emotion, with our anger, with the overreaction. We know we could have handled it better. And sometimes there's moments where we overreact and we actually think that the overreaction was valid and was right. We all have these different moments. But I want to speak about lights, camera, overreaction. When the lights, when the cameras, when the attention, when the moment comes... What are our actions? What are our reactions? What is our response? And so we're going to look, as you know, in Genesis, and we're going to look at 
the first and if not one of the greatest overreactions of all time, we're going to look in Genesis 4 at the story of Cain and Abel. Are you ready to jump in with me? Here we go. Genesis 4 verse 1, we're going to start here. It says this, Adam made love to his wife Eve. Easy. It says church people. We could do a whole message on just that scripture, but that's for another day. All the married people said, maybe we need to do a message on that scripture. And it says, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. And she said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Just like that, a fully grown man is born. I think they just mean a male. Anyway, later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Here we go. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. I don't know about you, but that's a little bit of an overreaction. I mean, Cain wasn't able to respond in the right way. Just a little play on words there. But honestly, like, think about this. Imagine EFTing your tithe and F&B sends it back and then you go kill your brother. Like, it doesn't make sense. This is an overreaction, people. This is like, God just looked at his offering and didn't accept it. And Cain tricks his brother out into the field and kills him. And it's an overreaction. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this story. We're gonna look at this scripture and we're gonna unpack a few overreactions. And you know, often with Cain and Abel, we speak about bringing our first and our best to God. We speak about, uh, sometimes it can be a teaching and giving, a teaching on worshiping God, on sacrifice. But today I wanna focus on Cain's reaction or overreaction and his anger and ultimately in his killing of his brother. And here's the thing, I don't want my emotions to rule me. I, going into this year, I want to rule my emotions. I want to lead my flesh. I don't want to live a life where I am reacting constantly to things. I want to live a life where I am proactive and instead of reacting, I can learn to respond to situations. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 to 27 says this, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, here's the key scripture. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. In order to overreact, not to overreact in the moments, we need to understand that we can actually train our bodies to respond to situations. In order to not succumb to anger and be overcome by emo emotion, we have to understand that we can actually prepare for the big moments. We can prepare for the lights and the, for the cameras. We can do a few things to be proactive and not reactive, amen. We're all running this race. We're all living for Jesus. We're all representing Him. We're all outworking our callings. We're all uh, outworking our purpose. And there can be moments in life that test us. I know that. And I've made lights of this uh, as I've started this message, but I understand that there are some real moments in life or some real emotions that we are dealing with that, um, that we can't maybe control, or we think we can't control, that can take us out. But I wanna speak about how we can be a little bit proactive. We're gonna look at the story of Cain and Abel and how we can actually deal with overreaction and maybe some of the things that lead to overreaction to bring some light to this. So are you ready? All right, four things. We're gonna look at a few things from, from Cain's overreaction from Genesis 4. And the first thing is this. Overreaction starts with me. Overreaction starts with me. Overreaction often starts with you and with me. You know, we often blame our overreaction on other people's actions. Sometimes it is warranted, but most of the time it's because of something in our lives. Let's look at it in the scripture, Genesis 4, verse 2 to 5. It says, Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. 
saw Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. You know, even at surface level, you can think Cain is angry because God didn't look at his sacrifice with favor. But the reason that happened is because of Cain's actions. Cain was the one that brought in the course of time some of his fruit to God. And because of his actions, his response was almost of anger. And it says his face was downcast. His response to God, we often think that's just because God didn't look at his um, offering with favor. But I think it's because Cain knew that, that he had fallen short. And it's almost like he was more angry with himself than he was necessarily at God, but he didn't know how to deal with these emotions. So it tells me that he was probably dealing with things before this moment. I mean, the very fact that Cain didn't bring his best shows us that there was something missing within Cain. The fact that he would just in the course of time bring some of his fruit versus his brother who would bring his best and his firstborn. Like, like that shows us that Cain was dealing with some things. You know, it's kind of like um, a few few years ago when I was a kid, uh, very, very young. I remember my mom was out and my sister and I, we climbed onto the roof to jump into the pool. And as we were on the roof, uh, we saw my mom's car coming down the road. And you know that feeling of like, this is where I die. And um, we're trying to think what to do. You can't really climb down. We're still in our pajamas. We haven't changed into our costume. So we just jump in the pool and uh, my mom gets home and she's like, comes in the house and we, we're swimming, but we like our pajamas. But she's like, why are you wet? Why is your, and it's like, you know, you like freak out. You're like, no, no, no. And you're like, you overreact because you don't want your mom to find out what you did wrong. It's like, we were the ones in the wrong. My mom didn't do anything wrong. She was just coming home. She was just, she just saw us. She was just asking a question, but we overreact to try and cover up what we did wrong. It's like, it's like um, when your mom asks you to clean your room and you haven't yet and she's, she wants to come in and, and it's that, that, that thought of don't go in there. Don't go in there. It's like you react, but it's because of your own mess. And this is kind of what's happened here to Cain. Is he's overreacting because of his shortcomings, because of his failures. And often it's our failure. It's our shortcoming. It's our, our areas where we've fallen short that leads to us overreacting. It's kind of like a defense mechanism. And we, we respond because of what we've got going on in our lives. We have to choose to recognize where we have failed, understand that it's okay that we failed, but be willing to try again. We're going to speak about that in a few moments. The second thing is this, overreaction covers up. Overreaction covers up. Overreaction often leads to us covering things up in our lives. Let's, let's keep reading. It says, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, verse 8, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Just before I speak about covering up, I just want to give a, a, little, a little nugget here, a deal, a, a, a key to dealing with anger and overreacting from this moment. When you are feeling emotional, when you are feeling angry, when you are feeling like you're about to overreact, don't go for a walk with the person or the situation that's causing you to feel that way. That's just, honestly, that's just some wisdom. Some of us already know if I start this conversation, you know where it's going. But because of your anger, you're like, I want to take it there. We're going to have this conversation. Some of us need to not have a walk with that person or that situation. We need to go have a walk with Jesus. He's going to give us the perspective that we need. Verse 9 says, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where's your brother Abel? I don't know. He replied, Am I my brother's keeper? Kind of like that, that classic response of a kid. Just kind of, who, why are you asking me? I shouldn't know where my brother is. See, what, what often happens when we overreact and we do something that we shouldn't do is we try to cover it up. We try to cover it up with reason. Uh, we make excuses. We lie. Can I just encourage us? We are going to fail. I hope that's encouraging to you this morning. We are going to fail. We're going to mess up. We're human. The, cho the choice is not whether we're going to fail or not. That's going to happen. The choice is to own up to it. The more you keep in the dark, the more you're going to lose control. You see, what happens here is that Cain goes from the offering moment where already it shows us that he had some undealt with things. The fact that he would bring that type of offering shows us that he had some things that he hadn't dealt with. So he was already covering up things there. He brings an offering that wasn't good enough. And instead of dealing with that moment, he tricks his brother out into the field. He kills his brother and then he covers up that he killed his brother. In other words, it just keeps going from bad to worse. The more you keep in the dark, the more you're going to lose control. It's like that one cupboard in the room that your wife just keeps putting things in. You know what I mean? 
Actually, we share the cupboard. But you know what I'm talking about, that cupboard or that room where you just like, I'm just going to put it in there. You're like, I don't know if I need the slip, you know, from Woolies that I shopped at today for my groceries, but I'm going to put it in the, I'm gonna, I don't know if I need my tags from my new clothes. I don't know if I need the shoe box. I don't know if I need this bag. We have a, we have a cupboard just full of like gift bags. You know when you get a gift in like a gift bag? Because it's like we might use this and we can give it to someone else. We just have all these gift bags. But it's like, you know that cupboard and all of a sudden the cupboard stops, you stop being able to close it. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's just kind of creeping out a little bit. And the next moment you put something in there and it all just falls out. That's what covering up does. We think we can just hide it and store it up. And all of a sudden, that one moment, that snap, when the lights and the camera hits, that snap causes us to snap and overreact because of all these things that we haven't dealt with because we've covered them up. Let's deal with our stuff. This year, 2023, let's not let another moment go by where we're still covering up all of our stuff. We are all broken. We are all messed up. We all have stuff. Let's deal with it together. Amen. My wife and I have been saying this over the last few weeks. We believe that 2023 is going to be 2023. Let's deal with our things. Let's get free of our things. James 5 verse 13 to 16 says this. Is anyone among you in trouble? let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is any among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, here's the key scripture. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You know, so often we think that if we just pray to God, we're going to be healed. And sometimes that can happen. But this scripture, I love it. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. I wonder if some of the things that are undealt with in your life, just one conversation could change it all. Darkness cannot survive in the light. If you choose to say, I'm not, I'm not covering this up anymore. I'm going to talk to someone. I'm going to bring this forward. I believe that we can find breakthrough and freedom. Amen. All right, number three is this, overreaction leads to isolation. Overreaction leads to isolation. Overreacting, covering up, should I say, leads to isolation. Let's keep reading in Genesis 4, verse 10 to 16. It says, the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crop for you. You You'll be a restless wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land and I'll be hidden from your presence. I'll be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so. Anyone who kills Cain, will suffer vengeance seven times over. And then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went down from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. You know, often when we hide our flaws and we hide our mistakes, we try to cover up our overreactions, our anger, and we, and we do things that we're not proud of and we cover it up, it actually isolates us. And I'll tell you why it makes us feel alone. Some of you might be feeling alone this morning and it's because we know that no one really knows really knows us. We know that, that if, if they, we, we think that if they did really know us, they wouldn't want to. And so we cover up and we keep these things and we've, we've lived with this brokenness. We've lived this with pain. We've lived with the mistakes that we've made and we cover it up and it actually isolates us from people because nobody actually ever knows who we really are. And the enemy lies to us and says, as soon as you tell someone, they're not going to want to know you. And so the loneliness just brings more loneliness and the covering up just brings more covering up. But we actually have to make a decision to, to own up to the things that we're going through so that we can feel like somebody knows us and somebody cares about us. You know, I actually find that when you are covering up things in your life and people try and encourage you and speak life over you and say you're amazing, you don't believe them because you know they don't know what you know. And so you think nothing they say holds any weight because they don't actually know the truth. And so we never actually receive encouragement. We never see freedom, receive freedom. We never see, receive breakthrough. We never, we never receive help because we're never actually honest with the things we need help with. 
This morning, my prayer is that we deal with these things, that we let go of the things we're covering up, that we pull the, we pull the cover off and we say, this is who I am. This is what I'm struggling. Here's the, here's the truth. You are not your mistake. You are not your failure. You are not the things that you are covering up. You are stronger than that. You are better than that. You have more of a plan and a purpose for your life, but you have to choose to not stay in it. It's like that sulking kid that threw a tantrum or didn't get the chocolate or didn't get the toy they wanted. And you go up to him and you go, what's wrong? Nothing, you know? What, do you want to talk about it? No. And it's like, you know that if the kid just talks about it and says, I didn't get the chocolate, they go, oh, it's actually not that bad that I didn't get the chocolate. Are you sorry that you had an overreaction that you threw a tantrum? Yes, I'm sorry. And then what? guess what? They often get the chocolate. <laughs> but we can be like that with our real big problems. And I'm not trying to make light of the stuff that we have. The reality is we're covering it up because it's huge. I mean, Cain killed his brother. This is a massive mistake, a mistake that surely he would be punished for. But I always ask the question, what would have happened if Cain owned up to his mistake? I don't know. I know our God is gracious. I mean, even in this moment, God sends him out, but doesn't necessarily punish him or give him a death sentence. We don't know what happens to Cain afterwards. But I wonder what would have happened if, what would have happened if he owned up to just the offering moment? If he was just honest with where he was at. We go from bad to worse because we keep shoving things into that closet, into that cupboard, into that room. When actually we can just give it to Jesus and we can give it to people. I'm going to invite the worship team to join me because we're going to pray for a group of people this morning in a moment. But I... I want to actually, I really felt in my heart to, to speak to those of us this morning that are feeling alone. And if there's anyone feeling alone this morning because of, because of brokenness, but I want to encourage you that you're just one open heart, open door away from, from comfort and from healing. Psalm 34 verse 18, it says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. You know, some of us, the reason why we overreact in situations is not because of something we've done, it's because of something that's been done to us. And we have broken hearts and we have hurt and we have pain and that pain and that brokenness causes us to overreact to situations. And we're living in this constant tension of blaming what happened to us to validate why we are acting this way. And you know what? That's fine. I, I, I can understand that. In fact, the world will probably say that's okay. But, but I'm not okay with you continuing to live like that. I think God's not okay with you living like that. I think God wants us to live free. It's not saying that what happened was okay, but what, what, what it's saying is that you can move on from it. You can move forward. And I love this scripture, that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. James 4 verse 8, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Galatians 6 verse 1 to 3 in the message, live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed, share their burdens, and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. We are meant to as the church to carry each other's burdens and carry each other's pain. And in a moment, I wanna pray for those that are feeling brokenhearted. But just to conclude a few more points, number four is this, and this is a bonus point, guys, so we're gonna throw this in there. I don't know if we would have time for it, but I wanna just share this point, is overreaction overflows. Overreaction overflows to those around us. You know, Cain's family had to move and live separate from, from, from Adam and Eve and from, from, from their immediate family, he had to move and, and live separate. It even says that they created their own town. Uh, named after Cain's son. And so they're living completely isolated, completely separate. And a few, a few scriptures later in Genesis 4, um, we see that Cain's descendants actually live with the same overreaction that Cain did, that Cain responded with. It says in verse 23, Lame Lamech, which is one of Cain's descendants, said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, listen to me, wives of Lamech, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me a young man for injuring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech 77 times. So here we see his descendants making the exact same mistakes, living with almost generational pain, generational overreactions. You know, what, you know what's sad about when we overreact and when we live in a place of overreaction? It's that everyone else has to deal with our overreaction too. People have to start to tread lightly. They have to start to tiptoe. They have to start living differently because 
maybe if they say something or do something, they, they know it's gonna bring a reaction. And then the sad thing is that maybe they end up living the exact same way that you lived. And they blame the way that you overreacted or someone in your family overreacted for the reason they are. And this is a hard truth, but here's the good news. Number five, overreaction never surprises God. We have spoken about Cain's overreaction, but let's take a moment to look at God's response in this story. Verse six, the moment that Cain brings the the offering and God rejects it, verse six says this, and the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? Which shows us that God's response to Cain's offering was never meant to bring anger. It was never meant to bring, you know, depression and, and, and being downcast. It was never meant to make Cain respond of emotion. Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. We already know that you didn't do that. You know, we can sometimes think, shame, isn't this a bit harsh of God to just reject an offering? I never read a few scriptures before. I never read about bringing your first fruits. I never knew that you had to bring it. How did Cain even know this? Well, God was teaching Cain right here and there. He was saying, Cain, this offering isn't good enough, but here's what you need to do. He gave Cain a second chance. God will always give us an exit strategy. He will always give us another take, uh, uh, another, another opportunity. God will always give us a, a moment to get out of the overreaction before it's too late. An, oppor- an opportunity to respond the way we know is better. I, I believe this Scripture is not, a, is not, a, not showing us God's, God's um, strictness, it's actually showing us God's grace. Cain brought a bad offering and God says, hey, I don't accept this, but why are you angry? Just bring me a better one tomorrow. God's always saying, hey, I know that you're human. I know that you're gonna fail. I know that you're gonna mess up. I know that your family has dealt with this overreaction for years. I know that your mom or your dad treated you this way. I know that you've gone through this, but that's okay. We all mess up, we all fail. Guess what? Just try again. Just have another go. And Cain ignores God's direction and he goes and kills his brother. It almost goes to the place of no return. But I believe that we are never too far gone for God to do something in our lives. Was Cain's anger wrong? Yes, but he was human. And he had opportunity to choose to deal with this anger and this emotion, but instead he gives into it. Through Jesus, we have grace. Yes, we mess up. Yes, we fail. But I believe that if we just take a moment to breathe, take a step back, we'll often see that there's a way out. I don't have to walk with my brother into the field. Let me, let me take a walk with Jesus. Let me take a breath. Let me think about this. Let me get perspective. Let me not deal with this right now. Let me not deal with this person now where I'm dealing with emotion. See, the good news is this. Every one of us, no matter how we have lived, no matter how we have reacted, can choose today to be proactive and not reactive. Can begin the journey of reparation, of fixing the things within us, can begin the journey of preparation and the work needed that we need to do within to be ready for these moments. We can make that decision because of the grace of Jesus. We can make that decision any moment. You might be that person that is labeled with anger issues or is over emotional. I don't think there's a problem being emotional, but over emotional. You might be labeled with that. That's what people might speak over your life. Guess what? Today, everything can change. That's what God gives us. He gives us an opportunity. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, I love this scripture. I'm sure you've heard it. But He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. God is not surprised by your overreaction and your emotions. He's not overwhelmed by it. In fact, I believe that He actually welcomes it, that He welcomes our brokenness and He welcomed it on the cross because He knows that in our weakness, He is strong. Where have you fallen short today? Where are the things in your life that, what are the things in your life that you haven't dealt with? What are the emotions that you feel like you can't control? I believe that in this moment, as we bring things to the light, I believe this morning, as we give over our things to God, as we have conversations with each other, as we pray for each other, I believe that we can find freedom from the things that we have held in the dark for years and years and years. This morning, the good news is you are forgiven. You've got grace. All you have to do is receive it. In a moment, um, we're gonna pray for some people, but lights, camera, overreaction. 
I believe can turn into lights, camera, action. This is an area you've struggled with or an area that you're saying, hey, I, I wanna commit to grow in. Here's your simple steps, lights. Bring what is in the dark into the light. Darkness cannot survive in light. Talk to God, talk to someone about the things that you are struggling with. Camera, focus on the things that give perspective. Cain was so obsessed with his mistakes that he didn't even notice that God was giving him another go. Focus on the things that can give perspective so you can see beyond the moment. Take a walk, take a step back. And I believe that's gonna bring action, not reaction. In the moment that those, th these moments come, that usually would bring an overreaction. We can remind yourself, you can remind yourself, hold on, I've done the work. I've dealt with these things. I've been here before. I'm ready for this moment and we can respond rather than react. I love everyone just to stand to their feet as we conclude this morning. If you're at any other location connecting in with us, why don't you stand to your feet? If you're online and you have a space to stand, stand. Otherwise, sit back and relax. But I wanna ask, I wanna pray for a few groups of people this morning and a group of people that are feeling brokenhearted because of something that has happened to them. That's the first group I wanna pray with. The second group that I wanna pray with is for those of us that know that we have some things that are in the dark that we need to deal with. And a third group of people that I wanna pray with, and I'm gonna pray with them first and foremost right now, is those of you that have never given your life to Jesus. The truth is, we cannot deal with any of the things that I've spoken about unless we have Jesus in our lives. We are imperfect, we make mistakes, we are weak, but in our weakness, He is strong. And when we invite Jesus into our lives, we have a different spirit within us. And so this morning, if you've never given your life to Jesus, this is the first step to freedom. This is the first step to the rest of your life. And so if you say, hey, I wanna give my life to Him, I wanna say a prayer with you. And so can you bow your heads and close your eyes all across this place? And if you're saying, this morning, I wanna give my life to Jesus. This morning, I wanna be forgiven of all my sin, past, present and future. And I wanna step into an eternity with Jesus as my Lord and Savior, knowing my God, knowing that one day when I leave this earth, I will spend eternity with Him. If that's you this morning, no matter what you've done right or done wrong, this isn't about your actions, it's about His action on the cross. If you're saying, I wanna know Jesus this morning. On the count of three, why don't you lift up your hand? One, two, three, all across this room. Lift up your hand so I, I know who I'm praying with, but as a sign of surrender to God, amazing. So many hands going up. If you're joining us at other locations, you can lift up your hand. If you're online, lift up your hand, no matter where you are. Take a moment. This is your decision for your life. This is not about the person next to you. This is not about the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years. This is about right now. Do you want forgiveness? Do you want grace? Do you want freedom? Do you want Jesus? This is your opportunity. Amazing, so many hands are going up. You can put your hands down. Church, can we give a huge, huge round of applause for every single person that lifted their hand? This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say a simple and powerful prayer. Simple, because you're gonna repeat it after me, but powerful because it's inviting Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. And together, as a church family, we're gonna repeat this prayer with you. We're gonna say this with you. And if you lifted your hand, why don't you say this from your heart? Say it, say it with meaning, you can repeat it after me. Say, thank you, Jesus, for giving your life so that I can have mine. Thank you for coming down to earth and dying on a cross for all my sin. From this day on, I choose you. I choose you as my Lord, as my Saviour, as my best friend. From this day on, I live for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's celebrate with all those people. And in a moment, in a moment, we're gonna let you know about your next steps and how you continue this journey that you've just stepped into with Jesus. But I wanna pray for those two groups of people. First and foremost, I wanna pray for those that are feeling brokenhearted. Not necessarily because of something you've done and, and, and because of the way you've overreacted, but because of something that has happened to you, because of something that has happened in your life that's maybe now causing you to overreact in situations that usually wouldn't get to you. But you know that it's because of this thing that's happened, it's holding on to you. It's like a chain on your, it's like a chain on your leg and it's like everywhere you walk, you know that this thing has happened and you feel like you can't get free of it. The Word of God says, with it, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Right now, I believe the Holy Spirit is here and I believe He wants to bring freedom. Again, why don't you just close your eyes. If you're feeling heartbroken this morning, it says that He is close to the brokenhearted. Why don't you lift up your hand?
Lord, I pray first and foremost right now that they will know that the brokenness that they are dealing with, that the pain that they are dealing with, that the things that have happened in their life, Lord, nothing can separate them from your love. And the moment we choose to draw near to you, you are already there drawing near to us. That when we knock on the door, you answer. So I thank you right now that first and foremost in this moment, that they will feel your presence and know your presence and know that your spirit is with them. That in their brokenness, you bring healing and you bring wholeness. I just pray right now that every single one of these people know that what happens to them is not their fault. And even if it was their fault, that you can bring grace and you can bring a new day. I pray that whatever they have gone through, Lord Jesus, no matter how small, no matter how big, that they will know that your love, that your grace, that your, your miracle working power is greater than anything that they could have faced. And I pray right now in this moment that they feel your presence, that they feel your closeness, that they know they are loved. And even in this moment, for some reason, if they don't feel your presence, that they'll know they are surrounded by a church family that is not gonna overreact and look, look down on them for what they have gone through. But Lord, that we are surrounded by church family that will carry your burden, will carry our, uh, their burdens together. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And I wanna encourage you that maybe you need to come and speak to someone. At the end of the service, we'll have a pastoral team down the front. And if you need a chat, you need to speak about some of these things, then come and chat to, our, chat to our team. But this is what I wanna do right now. I want us to do something a little bit more brave and a little bit more bold. Some of us have things in our lives that are undealt with. Things that we've done, things that we've said, things that have been done to us maybe as well, but there are things that we have shoved into that cupboard that we have left in the dark. You know, darkness is where mold grows. Darkness is where things go, just go wrong and, and, and where things get messy and where things get undealt with. This morning, I believe we're gonna bring things into the light. And so I want us to do something brave. I want us to do something bold. I want us to say, I'm serious about this. I'm not gonna just simply lift up my hand. I'm gonna take a step and I'm gonna say, I need help. I need to let go of this. I'm giving this first and foremost, God, I'm giving this to you. I am laying down my pain, my brokenness at the altar. And we're saying, I am open and I am ready and I'm, I'm vulnerable to receive prayer this morning. If you're saying, I wanna deal with some things that I haven't dealt with before, I want you to come out and join me down the front here. And our team's gonna come and we're gonna pray for you and we're gonna believe for freedom and we're gonna leave for breakthrough. So this is what we're gonna do. You can start coming out of your seats already on the balcony. We're gonna wait for you. We're gonna lift up the song. We're gonna worship together. And if that's you, come and join us down the front and let's pray together. At, at other locations, come out of your seats. Come down the front. We're gonna pray for you as well. Our team's gonna come and pray for you. Wherever you are this morning, we're gonna see freedom. We're gonna see breakthrough. So come on. So I'll stand with Amen. There's still a few people coming down the aisle and maybe at other locations. And now I, I, I truly believe just you coming out and stepping down the front has done half the work, if not more, if not all of it. Sometimes I think just, just saying, I have to deal with something is already all God needs to deal with it. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a moment. There's already a team praying for you. Maybe you need to be honest with team. Maybe you feel like you need to actually say, this is what I am dealing with. This is what I wanna give up this morning. We're gonna, I'm gonna take a moment, I'm gonna pray over you. But I really believe this moment, God's bringing freedom. And when I'm done, while I'm praying even, as I'm praying for you, this is what I want you to do. I want you to give your thing to God. 
You don't need someone necessarily to come and lay hands on you. you. You can take a moment and you can say, God, I'm sorry for this. I'm giving this to you. I'm not strong enough for this. I, I don't know how to deal with this. And you can, you can give it to God. I want you to speak to Him this morning. And our team's gonna come. We're gonna pray for you. We're gonna believe for freedom this morning. Lord Jesus, I lift up every single person joining us online today, joining us from other locations, maybe taking a moment to come down the front and those joining us here in Century City, Lord, I thank You that just the act of stepping out is already an act of humility, an act of being humble and saying, God, I'm surrendering to You. And I thank You that just by them stepping out, Lord, it's the first step to freedom, Lord Jesus. So I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, that all the things that are not of You, all the things that are holding us back, all the things that are keeping us bound and chained, Lord God, will break in the name of Jesus. I thank You for the spirit of anger, of over-emotion, Lord God, of annoyance, Lord, these things that we can't deal with, Lord. I thank You for that spirit to leave and for Your Holy Spirit, the spirit of peace, the spirit of joy, Lord, to fall on every single person. Lord, I thank You that in this moment, as we bring things to the light, Lord, that darkness cannot survive in light. And as we have been honest and as we have been Honourable Lord Jesus, You're going to bring healing. You're going to bring freedom. You're going to bring wholeness, Lord God. I thank You right now at every location, Lord Jesus, as we bring things to the light, that You are helping us deal with the things that we've left undealt, Lord. That we're not going to walk away from our opportunity. We're not going to walk away from our second chance. We're not going to walk away to, from, from the opportunity to deal with things in a better way, Lord. But this morning, today, we are taking a stand and saying, no more am I living with this living, Lord God. No way am I living with this type of lifestyle. No way am I living with this type of thinking, Lord Jesus. But today, I'm giving it to You. I thank You, Jesus, that 2023 is going to be a year where we walk free, where we walk proactive, where we walk able to handle our situations and handle our emotions and handle the, the things that come away. And I thank You that even when we mess up, because we are human and we will mess up, that we know that we will always have an opportunity to say, sorry, I'm going to try again. Lord, help me. In my weakness, You are strong. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're down the front. Maybe you didn't come down the front. And again, maybe you need to speak to someone and say, hey, can I, can I talk to you? Can, can you pray with me? Well, again, we'll have team down the front. And pretty much if you need to have any conversations, then let us know. I know online we've got prayer rooms and rooms where you can zoom in and chat to some of our team online. And at other locations, our teams will be available. But church, I, I, I really believe this is a key thing for us to get right going into this year for the simple reason of it's just gonna make your life so much more fruitful and better and, and lighter. We don't have to be bound by our emotions and by our flesh, but instead we can say, Jesus, I'm giving you control. Amen? Amen. I hope this morning encouraged you. I hope it spoke to you. I'm gonna invite Dion up and he's gonna uh, come and tell us a few more things and uh, then we're gonna conclude the service. Amen. Amen. Come on church, can we thank Reese? for that incredible, incredible message. We're gonna say goodbye to everyone who connected in online. We love you and we wanna see you back in church next Sunday. But hey church, are we, are we ready for a great week? Come on, one more time. Can we just thank Jesus for, he, for everything He did today? I think He deserves the glory. We thank You, Lord, for everything in Jesus' name. Well, hey, we are gonna have a great week. Um, we want to actually invite you, if you're here tonight, uh, here this morning, why don't you join us tonight? We, are, uh, we have a Touching Heaven Worship Night um, happening tonight. It's also our first PM service for uh, 2023. So why don't you join us for that? It's open to anyone. Um, and we'd love to see you here. And then um, lastly, if, if you pray that prayer right at the start, um, pray it alongside, along with Reese and just committed your life to Jesus or recommitted your life to Jesus. As a church, we would love to uh, gift you with this. It's a 21 day good news guide. And this is just something to equip you to start this journey with God. And um, it, it, it deals with some of the basics of what we believe. Uh, who God is, who Jesus is, who's the Holy Spirit. How do we walk out this decision that we made? So our team would love to, to place this in your hand. Um, so come and find them. They, they got the yellow lanyards. They got the yellow books. Grab one. We'd love to gift it to you. We believe it's going to be um, incredible in helping you on this journey. Amen. Amen.
All right, come on church. Why don't you grab the hand of someone next to you? I think it is safe to do so. We're gonna head into our week. It's gonna be summer camp. So as a church, let's be praying for our young people. And if you still have young people in your world, um, fuel age young people, why don't you come chat to our team and get them registered. But I'm gonna ask my friend Joel Kapapula, come up here. Joel's gonna pray for us. And then we're gonna go out with a song of praise. Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you, Father God, that the day in your house is, is better than a thousand elsewhere. Father, I thank you for what you've imparted into our lives and into our heart, Lord. And I pray that this week, Lord, we will live it out to the fullest. Father, I pray for blessing over every, every single person, over every single family, Lord. May you go with them, Lord. May you keep them safe. May you bless them, Lord. I thank you that this week will be a week of victory, Lord, where we get to live out the way you've called us to live. In Jesus' name, Lord. Bless every single one of us. And we gather tonight, Lord, we get to celebrate and live your name in Jesus name and everybody say you see the sun now bursting through the clouds black and white turns and color on for joining us at church today. We pray that you were so blessed by the service. And Thank you so much for joining us at church today. We pray that you were so blessed by the service and that God truly will continue to do something so special in your life this week. And if you need prayer or just want to chat to anyone on our team, we have an incredible team ready to connect with you in one of our connection Zoom rooms. All the details you will find in the description box below. And if you just want to be a part of everything that we do as a church or stay up to date, like or subscribe our YouTube channel or head to hillsomeafrica.com where all the information of everything that is happening in church you will find over there. Church, we love you and have an incredible week.
Yeah. 